Hey, welcome back to my home studio, everyone. My studio is small. It's a little bit cluttered. I'll get it a little bit cleaned up in the coming weeks um, as I do these videos. But you can see from what I'm wearing, it's spirit day at school, except school's not in session. So um, I'm doing this so my students can get further enrichment. Um, people out there and the internet can get further enrichment and just get our brains thinking about clay again. Um, my students don't have clay at home to work with, so hopefully they can file this away for an interesting little technique that perhaps they could try when they get back in the studio someday. If you do have clay at home, this is something that you could do even if you don't have fancy materials at home. We are using a couple of common household sorts of things that most people have. If you happen to have a styrofoam tray that came from the grocery store, um, this one even has weird little bumps on it. It's probably better without the bumps, but this is what I had laying around. And the other thing that we're going to be using are some old corn holders, um, you know, for holding corn on the cob. So I'm going to show you how you can transform one of these into a super handy tool. And we are going to be making a slab tray with a foot ring and handles. So grab your cup of coffee, come join me, and let's learn how to do this together. I'm starting off by wedging up some clay to make sure it's nicely combined, and then I'm going to start rolling it, and notice how I pick it up, flip it, and I'm using slab sticks to make sure that I'm getting an even thickness for my slab. I'm rolling it out in multiple directions to make sure that it will fit the styrofoam tray, and when I'm down to the level of the sticks, then I know I have a nice even quarter inch thick slab. Now I'm taking one of the red ribs and I am compressing the surface of both sides, rib both sides. This will give you a stronger slab. I am also adding texture. Now you could use a fancy roller like I have the MKM roller that I just used, but instead I'm just going to use a simple um, little piece of wood. So I'm using slab sticks that are the thinner slab sticks and I'm just making some nice linear impressions, just with the edge of it. And you can see a little bit closer. Now, whenever you use something which is not porous, say like the styrofoam, you want to wrap it in plastic. Now notice, I didn't tape it on there, I just put it in there and tried to lay it flat. Then I set the clay over the top of it, and I'm gently just ribbing it to it. Again, this will probably would have been better if I had a styrofoam tray that didn't have the denting on it, but it'll work fine for the demo purposes. And now I'm going to trim a little bit of the extra off on the edges, and then I'll rib it just a little bit more, and uh, now I'm trying to make it a little bit more precise with how much I'm trimming. Trying to just get, I'm just doing it by eye, gauging it by eye. I'm not worried about the corners because I will trim those off later. Now I'm going to mark where the foot ring is. Notice it is under the angle change of the tray, so it should be fairly wide. And I've scored that. So the foot ring is just a little uh, raised piece of clay that it will sit on. I start off by rolling kind of a fat coil and then I'll use my slab sticks again, and I'm just using a, small, a smaller rolling pin to flatten this out. So the foot ring is going to be made of slabs, and as you can see, it's a quarter inch thick again. Now, I could just take something straight and trace it and cut strips out, but instead I'm going to use the corn holder. So using a pair of pliers, I'm just going to bend apart the prongs of the corn holder so they're angled outward and that is going to be a cutter that I can use so as you can see I just glide it along and the bottom edge is going to be thicker so see how that the bottom edge is fatter the bottom edge is what gets connected to the tray itself so I'm going to score the bottom edge add some slip and now I can place that scored and slipped foot ring onto it. I'm cutting the corners at a bevel. That way, as I connect the next piece, 
it goes together really nicely when you have a bevel. And I'll cut another one. Again, it's fatter on the bottom, so I flip it over and I score on the fatter side, and that's the side that goes against the pot. Score, slip, put the bevels together, There we go. Now, getting this to adhere is very important. So, I'm going to gently compress the edges of that foot ring. I'm pressing it downward, but I'm also pressing where the corners are meeting that tray. I really want to get it compressed so the slip has sealed it. And then I'm just going to take maybe a wooden tool, seal any gaps or um, kind of creases that I see. And now I'm going to take some of the, oh, I'm going to take a paintbrush, smooth over any tool marks that I have, and the paintbrush, again, will kind of seal, seal that. Now I want to show you uh, a method where you can make handles. Um, as it turns out on this one, I decided not to actually attach the handles, but I want to show you kind of a neat way. I do have another video where um, I show handles on a tray. I decided uh, not to put it on, though, on this one because of the, the lines. So I make two coils that are chubby and thick, and then I'm flattening them. And I'm stretching it, making a little bit wider there. And I want to make sure that they're really tapered and looking very similar. Now I'm going to add a little bit of design to them. And just by impressing the uh, edge of that um, slab stick again, just like I did when I did the tray itself. And then I'm going to arch these around so they could slip on over the edge after the tray has set up. Uh, meanwhile, the tray is set to the side to get leather hard. Now the tray is leather hard. I'm going to put another board on the opposite side and then flip the whole thing. And then remove the tray. Remember the plastic was on it so it wouldn't get stuck. And now I'm just going to kind of clean up the interior where those irregular kind of funny bumps are because it was a bumpy tray. And I'm going to mark my corners and again just ribbing that, that interior a little bit. And now I'm going to trim away the corners to kind of round them. I am using an X-Acto. And now for cleaning up the edge I want to round it. So I can take either a straight rib a notched rib, or I can use a vegetable peeler. And I'm just sculpting the, the um, edge to get it a little bit more rounded. If you want to see a video on how I did the, the notched card, I definitely have a video on that. I'll try to link it in the uh, description. Then I'm compressing the edge with wet fingers. That really smooths out the uh, edges, gets rid of the tool marks to get it all nice and clean make sure that it hasn't flexed. Now, I'm going to try with the handles on. I could do the handles, but I'm going to decide against it. But if I liked the handles, I could just slip and score and attach them on. But in the case of this, I decided to leave it off after all. For drying, I'm going to store it upside down like this so it dries evenly. I hope that you have enjoyed this technique and learned something and subscribe for more videos on working with clay. Mm -hmm.